Well, hey there, and a happy new year, Dave Fenoy, here on the first Wednesday of 2022. And I don't know about you, I think about the high hopes I had for uh, 2021. <laughs> Not everything turned out the way I thought it would, uh, but we got through it. I got through it, and I know you got through uh, 2021, so uh, we've got our fingers crossed saying a prayer, and willing to sacrifice a chicken for all the best we can get in 2022. All right, another Ask Dave Fenoy Anything, and uh, no guest today, and I'm kind of easing into 2022, so... Uh, don't have a big agenda today uh, just to talk to you, answer your questions, see what's going on. So, you know, you can start typing those questions in. You know, uh, it's the beginning of the year. It's the time of the year um, that we're, well, well, we're talking about taxes now. We're probably getting our taxes together. We'll save that for uh, later on in the year, a month or so. Um but you've probably uh, spent a little time planning what you were going to do for this year. Um, and I wanted to bring up just some of my thoughts on where we are in the world of voiceover these days. Uh, and one of the things I wanted to talk about was trends. I think about when I got in the business 30 years ago, one, uh, nobody had a home studio. Uh, you had to be in the union if you were going to make this happen. You had to live in New York, Chicago, uh, maybe San Francisco, Los Angeles for sure. Um, but uh, you had to be where the studios were. Uh, and you had to go to your agents to audition. You had to go to the studio to do your work. Well, the world has certainly changed. Uh, it was a world without cell phones and so many other things. But now... Got to have your home studio, got to have your website. Hopefully uh, you do have an agent or agents, and those agents could be around the world these days. Uh, but the trends on work, uh, there's probably more work now than ever before for voiceover, despite the fact that a lot of us are a little nervous about AI and where that is going to go because the technology of AI just keeps getting... I hate to use the term, but better and better. <laughs> but uh, some of the trends uh, are more of same. Uh, the conversational read is still very much in. Anybody who's ready, you're not going to be getting work. So one of the things you want to work on is making sure uh, that you can do what I call translating the written word into the spoken word. Uh, and uh, if you want some tips on that, uh, you can give me a call uh, or give me a call. You can uh, drop a question in there. I can give you some tips. Uh, and a reminder that uh, you can stop by DaveFenoy.com and uh, sign up for, uh, you know, one-offs, five-package, ten-package, twenty-package. A lot of you took advantage of uh, my 20% off until New Year's Day. Uh, well, you can still uh, get uh, voiceover coaching from me, but just at the moment, it's not for 20% off. Uh, but the conversational read is in. Diversity is still a thing, despite the fact that we have a lot of people that uh, would like us not to know anything about diversity or history or lots of other things. But diversity is a thing. If you're auditioning for a cartoon, a video game, a uh, good chance if the character's Asian, the, the, the actor will be Asian. If the character's black, the actor will be black, so forth and so on. Um, but uh, diversity goes beyond that. Uh, I look at the number of auditions I get now for commercials, uh, TV promos, narrations of various kinds, and they are spreading out what the age group they're looking for and also whether it's male or female, uh, which is a big step forward. I recall when I got in the business, well, most of the narration, well, most of everything at that time, uh, was for men only. Um, and you certainly didn't see auditions for commercials that said, well, you know, 
uh, we're thinking about a man, but we're willing to uh, hear some women voices, or uh, we're thinking about a female voice, uh, but we're, we'd like to hear some male voices as well, and some now that just go, well, male or female. Uh, so good thing it says a lot about our society and uh, as i ramble on here one of the things i'm going to say is we are a reflection of that society Uh, so you want to work in this business pay attention to the world around you Uh, we don't live outside of the world we live within it the voices you hear in voiceover are, are voices that are a reflection of our society, both good and bad and indifferent. Um, Where are the jobs? Uh, Well, audiobooks are still a wide open field. Uh, There are millions and millions and millions of books uh, that need narrators, and uh, so those openings have not gone away. And yes, I I will raise my hand again and said I've done three audiobooks. I hope to never do a fourth. Um, It's not for me. But as my friend Scott Brick says, if you like it, and if you love being in a closet all day uh, reading that story, and you're good at it, uh, go for it. Go for it. Uh, It's a good thing uh, nobody can force you to do the kind of voiceover work you don't want to do. Video games, still a growing industry. Um, And I recommend if you want to do video game uh, work, Work from the uh, study from the the point of view of being an actor. Um, Commercials are not going away. They certainly are changing their style. Uh, You know, used to be problem, solution, call to action. Oh, God, my head hurts. Oh, I found this medicine that makes me feel better. Run to the store and buy it. Uh, That's the standard form of commercial, but so many commercials now are more a narration. A reminder that our business has been a part of your life for so long. So uh, commercials evolving just as uh, everything on the planet has for the last few million years. Um, A big area of growth uh, that I've been doing some work in lately, and uh, a number of voiceover friends of mine, dubbing. It's a whole new business that's been around for uh, decades, but not in the form it is in now. We used to think of dubbing, if you were doing anime, that was dubbing. Uh, If uh, you were a Spanish speaker here, good chance you might be dubbing some English programs into Spanish. As a matter of fact, uh, the Spanish market in dubbing has been way ahead of the uh, English-speaking market and dubbing for a couple of decades now. But um, thanks to Netflix and Amazon TV and Apple TV and Hulu uh, and a world filled with creative people uh, that are coming up with great shows in a variety of languages, uh, dubbing is one of the growth areas in voiceover now. I'm doing a show now that I can't talk about uh, beyond uh, it's from Brazil. Uh, That's all I'll tell you. But uh, you might want to look into dubbing. If you are represented, you might want to talk to your agent about uh, uh, dubbing opportunities. You might want to start looking up dubbing companies uh, uh, and Netflix and Apple TV and Hulu and uh, other content providers that uh, are doing shows from other places on the planet, uh, if you have the acting talent and skill to be a dubber. Uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve, uh, but it's, it's pretty good duty. Uh, well, with that, we'll talk about, I'll run my mouth a little more, but let's uh, see what some people have to say. Uh, I generally don't get a chance to do this when I have a guest, but uh, let me just go through here. Garrett Davis, Happy New Year, Dave. Well, Garrett, Happy New Year to you. Uh, there's Linda Baker. Hi, Dave. Hi, Linda. Uh, Gemini Life, I know who you are. Good evening. How are you? 
Uh, Jimmy, what's going on, man? Jimmy, you're always there. Happy New Year to you. Uh, and yeah, it has been a minute because I guess you you did miss a few, but uh, you're always there. Uh, Troy Allen, student of mine, it's fine. I welcome our robot overlords. It'll be fun. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Raja Baruti, worth every penny, uh, this genius. Oh, thank you, Raja. You're so sweet. Um, Nadia Ahern, how are you? Happy New Year to you, too. Uh, Theodore Mezzacapo, hey, Dave, good to see you back. Just getting over COVID. Uh, so uh, the show being back is a bright spot. Well, you know what? Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure I had COVID over this break. Um I heard from a friend of mine, uh, well, she posted it, uh, Karen Griffey, she's been a, a guest here, um, and she was in New York for That's VoiceOver and the Voice Arts Awards, and came home with COVID. And then her husband got COVID, and uh, she's worried about her kids getting COVID, and apparently a number of people who were there uh, are all, also got COVID. This, this is no joke, y'all. This is no joke. Um, it's if you happen to get it, it's not as bad as uh, uh, the last couple, but the Omicron is much more contagious, so many more people are getting it. And of course, the people who are being hospitalized and losing their lives, sadly, are uh, the unvaccinated. So if you haven't, please do. There's no excuse not to. I mean, you can make up ex excuse, but it's really not an excuse. You, know, you hear the thing, well, I don't know what's in it. You don't know what's in most of the things you put in your body. So uh, let's 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 be smart about that. Uh, continuing, oh, Paula Tizo, how are you? Uh, and uh, is is Paul with you too? <laughs> uh, and let's see, Jay Horace Black. Uh, hey, Jay, how you doing, man? Happy New Year. You say, question, do you always use a Manly Voxbox plugin, or do you sometimes switch to the 737? Uh, I do switch to the 737 from time to time. Also, sometimes I will use neither. Sometimes I just want a clean, pure sound uh, that has no equalization on it at all, that has no compression on it at all, there's nothing on it uh, but just pure voice. Uh, and as your question continue, do you happen to know who is doing this VO by chance? I think you know him very well. You to you know what? And I'm I'm not going to be able to uh, play that. I don't think uh, now because I can't separate the uh, that out. Um, hmm. So I I don't know. Maybe tell me. Uh, and and yeah, sometimes it could be me. I don't know if it's uh, something I did or a friend of mine, but. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear it. Uh, Michael Glover. Hi, Dave. I'm so excited about your making another run at Walking Dead. Jimmy Bencoli and I are living vicariously through you on this one. If you can answer a couple of questions, not about the game, but about your recording process, will you be recording at home? Do you get to use your 416, or are you using a different mic? Do you get to do any self-directing, and do you need any help? <laughs> Congrats. Um well, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, uh, there's been a lot of talk about some rebooting of The Walking Dead. Uh, as of yet, nobody from Telltale has gotten in, in touch with me about it. So I don't know if I will be involved or not. I would like to think I will be. Uh, and if I am, uh, it's a very good chance I could record from home. Most of the things I'm doing now, most of the things most people are doing now, we're recording from home. Uh, I've done a number of gigs outside, but far fewer than I used to do, uh, and they're very careful uh, about uh, you being in the studio and wearing your mask when you're not on mic and so forth and so on. Uh, so chances are, um, whatever's coming up, I'll probably be working from home uh, if, if the Omicron is still raging. Uh, if not, could go either way. Um, and if I'm working from home, what mic will I use? Well, my mic of choice is the 416, uh, but I have a, a 103 hanging in my booth as well. And from time to time, 
uh, people w will request uh, the 103 over the 416. So it would be one of those two mics. And let's see. Ove Malik. Hi, Dave. Happy New Year. For your email marketing, do you use a separate services such as MailChimp, or does your email allow you to send out uh, marketing uh, campaigns? I use MailChimp, um, and I, I probably don't do as much marketing as uh, other people might, especially people who haven't been around as long as I have, although I, as long as I've been around, I might start to uh, need to start doing much more marketing because, hey, you know, let's... Is he still alive? Yeah, that Dave Fenoy guy, I, I heard of him. Is he still around? Yeah, I'm still around. Um, <laughs> Charles Reese, how you doing, man? Happy New Year. Good to see you. Uh, Raymond Hearn, Happy New Year, Dave. Happy to join in the live for the first time. Uh, well, happy to have you here, Raymond. I hope you will make this a habit. Uh, oh, John Malone, how you doing? Happy New Year, Dave. And if you don't know John Malone, and by the way, John, um, just excellent work, excellent work, excellent work. Um, let's see. Uh, Michael Govlover again. I was planning to go to VO Atlanta, but I think I will wait until next year. Well, you know, um, VO Atlanta is coming up uh, later this year. I am going to go. I've already agreed to it. I agreed to it before uh, Omicron hit. Uh, I'm going to go, but I'm going to be very safe. Uh, if you see me walking around in the building, you'll see me in a mask um, until I step to a, a podium, to a microphone, uh, to to converse or teach. Uh, I'll have my mask on. Uh, I'll be um, social distancing a little bit. You know, it's it's really tough uh, when you're in a group. Uh, and there's just a bunch of people that you love uh, that you don't get to see all the time. You know, you you just want to shake hands, you want to hug, um, and it's kind of sad right now. We we have to be careful of that. Uh, but I will be there because I already already agreed, unless uh, it's canceled. And I hope it's not because Gerald Griffith says this will be the last VO Atlanta. And VO Atlanta has just been an amazing uh, conference. I, I've said it often. It and that's voiceover are the two best conferences, voiceover conferences, uh, going. Uh, one of the things I like about VO Atlanta, it it's not just a day. It lasts for several days. Uh, there is a treasure trove of information and wonderful people to meet. Uh, to share knowledge, share ideas, share fellowship, um, and uh, encourage each other to continue on our path here in voiceover. So I will be there uh, with bells on and a mask. Let's see. Uh, Natalie McIver, Happy New Year, Dave. Great to see you as always. I'm glad you've recovered. Me too. Um, and wait, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to you there. I'll talk a little bit about, I don't know for sure that I had COVID, but, um, at Christmas, uh, we had two of our three girls were in town. Uh, the one that lives here and, and the doctor from New York, uh, the oldest, uh, the interior architect, uh, couldn't be here, but, um, it was a lot of family time and a few family get-togethers, and uh, one family member uh, had a boyfriend who wasn't vaccinated, but we didn't know. And he came to Christmas dinner and uh, apparently infected everybody. My mother-in-law got it. Uh, I think my wife and I got it. Uh, several other people in the family got it, but thank goodness uh, the rest of us were vaccinated and boosted. Uh, so symptoms were very mild. You just kind of, I got a little sore throat for a couple of days. You can probably still hear a little bit of that sore throat in me right now. Now let's get back to the rest. Let's get back to the rest of your question. Uh, question, is that your voice I'm hearing on the movie King Richard announcing a tennis match with Venus Williams? Oh, you're so sharp. Yes, that is me. Um, I lit, did a lot of uh, work 
on that film. A lot of voice work behind the scenes, uh, a lot of looping. I'm several uh, tennis coaches. I'm people in the crowd. Uh, I'm various thugs on the street. <laughs> and, uh, and I get that little cameo uh, announcing Venus Williams at a very important match. Well, thank you for recognizing that. Uh, although I post about my work, I don't post about everything because then I'd just be posting, posting, posting. Uh, Harry Lyles, what's going on, man? Happy New Year to you as well. Um, Jamie Nicholas, Happy New Year, Dave. Imagine if we were this crazy in the 50s, how many would be in wheelchairs and iron lungs from polio? Ah, so true, so true, so true, so true. Um, you know, this isn't that type of uh, show, uh, but I think about the number of vaccinations you have to take to go to school. I think about the uh, almost 20 vaccinations our military has to take uh, to be in the military. And, and it's just a shame uh, that this vaccination, uh, this vaccine, uh, has been so politicized and is so misunderstood, and we're living in a society now uh, where you're as likely to hear lies as you are to hear the truth from so many sources. Um, it's holding us back. By the way, I got to watch uh, the movie Don't Look Up, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it did seem more like a documentary, didn't it? All right, and uh, Marian Toro, Happy New Year, Dave, and Happy New Year to you. Is Now, is that new green hair or is that old green hair? Anyway, uh, J. Horace Black, yes, uh, Dave, the YouTube was your Xfinity TV spot where you played the Christmas animated dog. Ah, thank you for that. I forgot about that. Um, it's interesting. I've done a, quite a bit of stuff for Xfinity and a few other of the, the TV apps. Hmm. Oh, there, unfortunately, there's no uh, exclusivity there, so I guess I'm okay. Uh, when is VO Atlanta? It is in March, and I, I think March 20th. I think those are the day, March 20th, for about a week. Uh, Michael Glover, I think in March. Yeah, well, you're, you're no better than me there, Michael Glover. You don't have the date right in your hand. Uh, and here, here's the answer. I knew somebody with it. Jim McNicholas, uh, March 31st uh, through April 3rd at the Hilton Atlanta Airport. All right. So, uh, VO Atlanta, I hope by then uh, we'll be out of this Omicron thing. I had uh, read somewhere that it's expected to end in February or or drop off in February. We'll see. Uh, Renee Tabor, I had COVID too. It went through our family swiftly but mildly for most. I'm telling you, the vaccine is a game changer. Uh, and let's see. Oh, bonjour, Luc de Villard, my French friend over there. Cross the big water. Hello, Dave and everyone. I have a one, have a wonderful year, uh, 2022, and may and may it won't be another 2022 or 2021. 20, I'm going to say 2021 uh, was a little better than uh, 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 2020, uh, but then it, it did start with, uh, you know, the, the Capitol riot. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, Gabriel Kunda, what's going on, man? Super talent. Gabriel Kunda, how are you and the wife? Oh, everybody's good. And uh, got to get you on as a guest my friend. And uh, let's see. Jay Horace again. Uh, Dave, can you talk or demonstrate your approach to making a read more casual, more casual, real people? Um, okay, I'm going to do it kind of simply. Ordinarily, you, you heard me say uh, that what we're doing in voiceover is translating the written word into the spoken word. Uh, if you have a piece of copy, do I have a piece of copy here anywhere? Oh, uh, let's see. Don't have a piece of copy right. But let's let's just say, uh, hold on one second here. I'll pull something up. What is that? Nope, that's not suitable either. Uh, one of the problems these days is uh, 
You have so many. Oh, wait a minute. Here's one. Um, this is uh, for um, Cessna. Uh, one of the things that happens that keeps you from happy, having a, uh, a read that's conversational, one is you are not truly connected with the copy. Uh, you are trying to make the copy have meaning based on how you say it. Introducing the next big thing in flight, the new Cessna Sky Courier Utility Turboprop. Uh, no one would call that uh, conversational. Uh, no one would call that connected to the copy. It's, oh, well, it says introducing. Uh, let me give it the big read. Uh, but often, even if that's not what we're doing, pushing, 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 giving it a song that's not really our own, uh, we're still saying, introducing the next big thing in flight, the new Cessna Sky Courier Utility Turboprop. Uh, and it's a little reedy because I'm reading every word. What you want to be able to do is read the phrases and glide over the words the same way you do when you are just talking to somebody. Introducing the next big thing in flight, the new Cessna Sky Courier Utility Turboprop, designed from the ground up with a flexible payload that's as big as your dreams. Uh, now, it's still written kind of selly, uh, but that last read was a lot more conversational and regular person uh, than where I started. So a couple things I, I suggest you do. Uh, one, I call the three and three. Get really familiar with the copy. In voiceover, we get very proud of our ability to uh, read, uh, just pick up a piece of paper and read it and make it sound good, but chances are when we do that, we're not really connected to what we're saying because we don't know exactly what we're saying. We don't know uh, when that paragraph begins here how it's going to end there. Uh, when we are prepared, which means reading the copy, understanding what you're saying, uh, what are the concepts that are important, uh, what are the phrases, the words uh, that are important. Uh, when, we, when we know that, and the way I try to do it is what I call the three and three. Read it three times in your head and then three times mouthing it before you ever do a read. Uh, now, sometimes you're pressed for time. Instead of doing that, just read it a couple times through recording it and listen back. But make sure when you do that first read that you read it slowly and accurately. Because your brain is programming itself to say what you said the first time. It doesn't know right from wrong in terms of what you read. If you read it and make a mistake, it thinks, oh, the mistake is what I'm supposed to do. I promise you, uh, you will pick up a piece of copy, copy, you will make that mistake, you'll come back and read it the next time, and guess where that mistake's going to be? Right in the same spot. Uh, and then, of course, the next time you get it and you you get past it without the mistake, then you mess up something <laughs> a little later on because your little head's going, wow, I got past that. And oh, no, there's no, that other thing. Uh, so glide through the words. Uh, sometimes words are suggested. Uh, if I were saying, oh, I really want to go to the fair. Oh, I, wonder, oh, I really want to go to the fair. Now, I made it a little extra uh, uh, glidy. Oh, I really want to go to the fair. Now, you heard every word, but I did not clearly enunciate every word. And for most of us, that's how we speak most of the time. And when you're trying to come across as conversational, that's the way you want to do it. Uh, you, you just want to say the phrases. Uh, all too often, we're trying to prove that we know what the important words are and what the concepts are, and we're trying to make it special because we don't trust ourselves to be enough. You're enough. You're enough. Okay. Garrett Davis, I know you're not an audiobook guy, but when doing audiobooks, is, uh, is each page a separate file? Um, okay, once again... I'm not an audiobook guy. I have done some audiobooks. I have done lots of pieces of audiobooks. Uh, uh, but no, 
each page is not a file. Uh, if you wanted to break it down, uh, perhaps each paragraph could be a file, but generally what I, I have done, and I'm not saying that uh, how I do it is, is how people who do audiobooks for a living uh, and who have done hundreds and hundreds of books, uh, but my belief is that they record the whole thing as a file, and if not that, I would imagine chapters. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, Marion and Toro again. Hey, hey, it's Omber Green. Don't worry, I'll be turquoise soon. <laughs> oh, love it, love it. Rick Lance with the great mustache and beard and hair. Uh, hello, Dave. Uh, Happy New Year. Just enjoying the show. Well, Rick, I enjoy you being there. Uh, Robert Castile, how you doing? Oh, man, now that's a hell of a picture. <clears throat> Hi, Dave. How you doing? Greetings from Colombia. All right. There you go. There you go. Uh, Luke de Villars again. Don't Look Up is pretty good, but that movie, Green Sun from the 70s, uh, happening in 2022 was pretty scary. Green Sun? I think you meant Soylent Green. Maybe it, uh, yeah, yeah, you did. You meant Soylent Green. Maybe uh, that's uh, how they did it. It, it. They called it Green Sun in, in French. But Soylent Green here, and probably because Soylent didn't really translate. Um, even if Charlton Heston was a damn good actor, I've always had trouble with the man, especially his affiliation with the NRA. Uh, but it's just a personal thing. Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of old movie stars, uh, and he's one of them that you have some problems with. Some of my favorite actors from back in the day, um, you know, as artists, they're one thing. As uh, political creatures, they're something else. Um, and we're living in tough times for, you know, enjoying art and separating that art from sometimes artists uh, who let us down. Uh, so many do. Loved Bill Cosby as a comedian, loved the show. Cannot condone uh, what he did. R. Kelly, loved R. Kelly's music. Wow, really can't condone uh, what R. Kelly did. Um, and sometimes we go so far, uh, they're canceled, uh, their art is canceled. I, I can't say I'm listening to R. Kelly music anymore, uh, but I do think of uh, one of my favorite comedians, uh, D.L. Hughley, uh, when asked, was he still listening to R. Kelly, his response was, of course I'm listening to R. Kelly. Just like I sing the national, uh, after they said, are you listening to R. Kelly after what he did? He says, of course I'm listening to R. Kelly after what he did. Just like I sing the national anthem after I know what America did. Uh, hmm. Makes you think a little bit. Uh, it, it's tough sometimes. It's tough sometimes to enjoy the art when you know the person who created that art has done some things that... You just can't uh, wrap your head around. All right, Troy Allen. Hey there, Dave. Happy Wednesday. The voice acting isn't putting on silly voices. It's there. Uh, is there a favorite character you voice, uh, you've done in the past? Uh, you know, uh, I've got two answers uh, for that. Uh, one, it's kind of like trying to choose your favorite child. Uh, but that said, I always come back to Lee Everett from The Walking Dead game. Uh, perhaps not the most difficult job I've ever done, uh, but so rewarding because it gave me so many gifts. The game uh, was the game of the year in more than 100 uh, uh, publications. I was nominated for best uh, voiceover in a video game a number of times, won a couple. Um, I was even nominated for a BAFTA, the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, got to go to London for the ceremony. <sighs> Alas, I didn't win, but uh, I certainly understand those actors who have been nominated for Emmys and Academy Awards and Grammys who say it is an honor just to be nominated because it is. Anytime your fellow actors, the people in your industry are recognizing your work 
and uh, speaking of it in superlatives, um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. All right. Crystal Waters. Happy New Year, Dave. I popped in and heard you say, trust yourself to be enough. Thank you. And, and it's so true. Trust yourself to be enough. Um, sometimes when I'm teaching, I will give a read, uh, but it's always with a caveat. Look, I'm not trying to get you to sound like me. I'm not trying to get you to make the choices that I'm making. I'm trying to demonstrate uh, one particular thing or another in what you're doing. Uh, but the thing that really makes you special is you. Uh, it's that unique thing about you that perhaps you don't even recognize yourself because you're with yourself all the time. Um, y- you don't think of yourself as that special from time to time because, you know, you got up with you, you, you know where all your flaws are, and sometimes perhaps you don't recognize uh, the beauty in yourself. But everybody out there, everybody is, is special in some way. So find out what that is that's special about you. Uh, I, I forget who it was that said it, but uh, the thing that people make fun of you about, that's your fortune. Uh, each and every person that's listening to this is unique in, in some way and will connect with an audience in a way nobody else can. All right. Uh, Yeah, Michael Glover. Cosby. Well, Cosby. Ouch. Broke my heart. But I still enjoy his work. Uh, Yeah. You know, when you go back in time, you know, time uh, heals all wounds. You go back in time, you listen to some of the the great uh, classical artists, and then you love their music, and then you find out they were just horrible people, just horrible people. Um, you you will enjoy the art, uh, the paintings, the sculpture of, of, of some of the great masters, and then you find out they were horrible people. But we still love the art. And um, I'm not saying that we need to condone uh, behavior like an R. Kelly, like a Bill Cosby, uh, like a Jerry Lee Lewis, like uh, so many others. That, but... Uh, we got to find a balance. We got to find a balance where we understand that damaged people uh, can make some beautiful things. Uh, a couple other things I wanted to talk about that I want you to think about uh, as we get through the year. Um, little things, uh, little questions I get sometimes that should I slate or no, should I not slate? If they tell you to, if they don't say slate, uh, or if there's no mention of slate, slate. Um, but make sure your slate is short and to the point. Um, you can slate your name, Dave Fenoy. You can even say hi, Dave Fenoy. Uh, if it's a character for a video game or for a cartoon, hi, the, yeah, Dave Fenoy playing blah, blah, blah. Uh, should you slate in character? Well, sometimes I'll say Dave Fenoy as so-and-so. Um but don't ramble on. I was having a talk uh, with a couple of uh, casting directors who were complaining about how many people, uh, well, hi, you know, this is so-and-so, and, you know, I just want to thank you for the opportunity uh, to do this. Now, I was thinking this character was actually like this, but, you know, you said you wanted it a little bit like that, and, and I, and I kind of understand why you see that, but, you know, uh, I was thinking this way, so this is what I'm going to do. I hope you like it. And nobody's got time for that. Um, imagine if you're on the other side uh, and you're listening to all these auditions. You don't want to hear much other than the auditions. You want to hear who that person is, uh, and boom, there. Uh, And don't leave too much room between your slate and your take. Uh, I had a student the other day, and he had sent me something, and it was like five seconds, six seconds. Well, when the hell is this thing going to start? We're in a society now where we have very short attention spans, and people are busy. Um... I would say after your slate, uh, leave half a second, maybe a second. In between takes, 
a second to a second and a half, maybe two seconds, maybe. Um, and if your second tape take is the same idea as your first take, you just liked a couple of things you did better in it, just give them the take you like best. Um, the, the casting people are listening to dozens and dozens and dozens of uh, of of auditions. Uh, and at some point, they get really tired. And that leads me to another thing on your auditions. Uh, and, and back to the conversation about you being special. If you have another take on it, give it your take. Uh, what you might want to do is, well, they seem to be leaning this way. Let me give them what they're asking for. And let, then, let, then give them what they didn't know they wanted. That thing that you do, how you saw it. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I have and people I know have booked the gig because they did it differently than everybody else, even beyond, oh, it's your voice and the rhythm of your speech, but they did it the way they thought it should be done instead of how they were directed. Uh, have a little faith in yourself. Uh, and, well, I looked over, and James Earl Jones, to me, was the voice with a capital V, but I guess this gentleman have a heart of gold. I wonder how much that man and voice have inspired you. You know, he is uh, uh, one of my great inspirations. When I first came to town, my agent said, well, he's a young James Earl Jones, uh, because I, I uh, you know, I fairly deep voice. Um, and, uh, I was just coming out of radio, so that I was making sure that everything was being spoken very clearly. Uh, my first job, uh, was for the Disney Channel, uh, playing Darth Vader. Uh, and they gave me a, a coffee, uh, coffee, uh, pot. I put it under my chin. They said, just uh, hold it right there and then talk. And that gave me the, the, uh, the echoey sound from Darth Vader. It was like, ooh. Oh, I have to do this at home. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm still a huge fan of James Earl Jones. I had an opportunity at uh, that voiceover, or rather it was a Sovis Awards, um, and one of the first of the Sovis Awards, uh, where James Earl Jones was being honored. I was the booth announcer at that, and so he, waiting to get on stage, had to sit next to me. And in between uh, announcements, while other things were going on, I said, oh, Mr. Jones, how are you? Dave Fanoia, I'm a big fan. You're a big influence on me. And I just, can you, can I get a selfie with you? I took the selfie. And uh, he said, wow, that's my first selfie. And, uh, ah. but uh, yeah, James Earl Jones, just one of the best. Uh, I've never heard anything about him that wasn't positive. Jim McNicholas, I usually slate high. This is with two takes for, uh, yeah. It, you know what, Jim? That works. That works. It's straight to the point. Um, you know, you, you'd be surprised how much of your personality comes through very quickly. You don't have to uh, try to sell them on anything. Uh, one of the things I would say, again, about slates is make sure your slate is of similar energy as your take. You don't want to, hi, this is Dave Fenoy. If you want to go to such and such and so and so, uh, a lot of times they're going to eliminate you at the slate. If you don't have the idea, the feel, uh, the, the, if you don't generate an interest in the first five or 10 seconds, they're on to the next thing. Uh, so once again, if you do more than two takes, put the one that that really sings up front. Put your best work up front. Uh, make sure you understand the copy and you are giving that copy real life. All right. Uh, let's see. Anybody else here? Um, we're about 15 minutes out or less if uh, we run out of uh, thoughts and questions. Um, your website. I know people talk about it all the time, but uh, your website is important these days. Make sure that when people get to your website, they can hear your demos. 
uh, that it looks professional, that your demos are, are, are right there on page one. Uh, how to contact you is right there on page one. Um, if you want other things, fine, but make sure they can get in touch with you and they can hear what you sound like uh, on the number of genres that you do voiceover in. Uh, you might want to have a rate card if you are non-union, uh, and that saves you from those those uncomfortable situations where, they say, well, you know, uh, how much would you charge me for this? Well, you can say, oh, you can go to my rate card. Um, saw an article the other day, I wish I could say I wrote it, I didn't, uh, talking about what to say when somebody asks you to do work for free. Uh, and there were a couple of good lines. Well, you know, I thank you for the opportunity, but I'm just not able to do, uh, I'm so busy I can't do things for free at this time. Um, uh, it, you know, well, I'm, I'm sorry I can't work for free. That wouldn't be fair to my clients who pay me money. Uh, you know, uh, we all want to work, and we're doing this work because we love this work. If money weren't a thing, I'd do it for free. But money is a thing. Uh, so we're not going to do it for free. And speaking of somebody who doesn't do it for free, Joe Cipriano. Uh, <laughs> how you doing, Joe? Happy New Year, man. I have a very important question. When? When? When will you and Mo have dinner with Ann and me? <laughs> I'll hang up and listen for the answer on the air. <laughs> Joe, all I can say is soon. Let's do it soon. The sooner, the better. Uh, let's look at before the 20th. My birthday is the 20th, and I'm, my daughter is going to take me on a trip. Uh, usually I'm the guy footing the bill. Somebody else, somebody else is going to pay. So I really don't have to buy the flight. I don't have to buy any meals. You're paying for the hotels? Okay. 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 Dad likes this. Um, but either uh, before the 20th or uh, in February. Let's do that, Joe. Uh, and, and speaking of Joe, one of the nicest guys in the world, um, an amazing talent, um, if you have lived in America, you have heard his voice, uh, and I am proud to call him Fred. Oh, I remember one. That's why I said it here, so I, I wouldn't forget. Um, people ask me about equipment all the time, and especially if you're just getting started, one of the things I recommend is the Focusrite 2i2. Uh, it's just a workhorse for people. It's a great little preamp. Uh, but now um, UA, the people who make the UA Apollo Twin and Quad and, and a host of other uh, uh, recording uh, devices and interfaces, uh, this is their new product. The Volt 1, they have a Volt 2 with two channels, uh, but it brings you some of the uh, uh, preamp uh, quality of UA, uh, but you can also... Uh, use some of the the plugins with this, which uh, you know, Focusrite doesn't have the plugins, but you can get plugins with this. So, uh, just thought I'd, I'd show that. I uh, they were sending me one about three months ago. It took this long uh, for it to actually get shipped, but the Volt one um, might want to check it out. This is running. I think it's running about two hundred bucks which is uh, very inexpensive for UA products. Uh, but it uh, has a lot of the uh, UA uh, twin goodness built in. Just got this today. I'm going to try it out tomorrow. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And, uh, oh, yeah, so your website, uh, your demos. Uh, I shouldn't have to say this. I'm going to say it again. Don't do your own demos. Please, please get somebody else to do your demos. The only ones I'll do are uh, video game demos right now because I'm a busy, busy guy. Uh, but there are a lot of good people out there. Uh, your demos are going to cost you anywhere from a low ball of 1500 to 3000 uh, But it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. 
Um, and you want to go with somebody who has done some demos, who has been in this business for a while, uh, who is in this business. Um, and if they're they're not uh, your friend who's a musician who has a studio that knows how to mix because your mix will be wrong. Uh, it's the person who's been doing demos for people for a while in voiceover uh, because there's a, a different feel, a different mix, a different sound. And you probably can't do that mix. All right. Uh, and uh, that was, uh, I was going to show that for equipment. Uh, any other last questions or thoughts or because uh, I'm going to wrap it up so I can go get my dinner and uh, binge watch some stuff on TV. <laughs> anyway, uh, listen, Happy New Year, everybody. And uh, here's wishing each and every one of you uh, a better year than 2021. Not necessarily that 2021 was so terrible. Uh, I just want you to have a better year. And yet, I want all the years to come to be better than all the years that have been. Love you guys. All the best. Bye-bye. Oh, book something. <laughs>